Hi, my name is Richard Furr, and I'm a blacksmith in Door County, Wisconsin. The sword we're making now is going to be 24 inches of, of cutting edge, double-edged, and leaf-shaped. The most common length was 18 inches. The tools we're going to use are very similar to the Greek period ones. We have a large block to use as an anvil. We have hand hammers, tongs to manipulate the hot work, and uh, we have chisels to help refine the shape. The first thing to do is to create a pattern so you can get an image in your head out onto paper, or in this case, wood. You can work out proportions and get a better feel for the overall shape, so you have this supported mental image and something to reference when you're forging the blade. From the very start, your selection of your raw material, if that's incorrect, then the blade won't be any good. If you don't do the smelting right, if you incorporate too many impurities into it, then the sword won't work, because you're taking dirt as a raw material, iron ore. You would roast them, heat them up, and either dunk them in water or uh, let them cool and crush them, turn them into powder. Then you make a large mud brick stack called a furnace, and you would load charcoal in that and get air through the bellows and dump in the iron ore, and then another layer of charcoal and more iron ore and more charcoal, and over the course of a day, you would pull the impurities out of the iron ore. According to Aristotle, they could then alter the carbon level of that iron bloom. So they weren't left with whatever came out of the furnace. They could alter it. They could dictate how useful that material was going to be. Then we take it to a blacksmith's forge, a charcoal-driven forge with uh, two bellows, just like the Greeks used. So it provides air to the charcoal, so it burns hot. We put the bloom fragments in there. The bloom is hot and we need to consolidate it. There's a lot of wasted space in there. So we need to pull it together into a solid bar. And we do that through repeated heating and forging and some forge welding, meaning we're joining the individual pieces together. And in that way, they could dictate where the cutting edge steel was. So they could pick the best material to be right out on the cutting edge. And then the material that was a little bit lesser quality could be for the body of the blade. And uh, from there, it gets refined by hammering. So we force it into the shape we want it to be in. And then we heat that entire blade up and quench it. The quench medium can be oil or water. There's uh, grounds for both of them in Greek history. We'll be using oil in ours. So we heat the blade up to roughly 1450 degrees Fahrenheit, what I perceive as a dull orange. And it's that severe temperature change when we pull that heat out that the blade gets hard. And depending on the chemistry, we have very little time to cool, matter of seconds. It's very severe on the steel. You can have it crack along the cutting edge in a hundred different places, and then you have to start over. So in the quench, this Spartan sword is birthed, it is given life. So this tool of death is born in this quench. After the quench, we'll rub a shiny spot on the, on the edge so we can see the true nature of the steel. And then we'll bring it back to the coals and slowly heat it over the coals until we get a visible color to the steel. That's the tempering process. We formed a certain structure, crystalline structure in the steel and that carbon is trapped inside that. And by reheating to a lower extent, we allow some of that carbon to escape back out into other structures in the steel. And that takes the brittleness away and gives us a functioning edge. Following the quench and temper, you still have to create the edge on the sword. So it was scraped down to a clean finish. Sometimes they used stones or steel scrapers to refine the shape, and then it was polished because a polished sword cuts better. There's less resistance. The thing that makes the finished blade so special is you took the, the thought, the mental image of it, your impression of what a sword is, and you've created it, you've made it real. It's that three-dimensional finish line of the, the initial thought.